Hello, and welcome to Hack to School, a special partnership between PC Mag and Lenovo. We're going to do a lot of thing, cool things today. We're going to teach you how to code. And here with me is John Deerland Weaver, who is the head of the computer science department at Stuyvesant High School. Congratulations. Right. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I've been teaching computer science for over a decade. We do a lot of great work at Stuyvesant, and I'm really excited to bring some of that knowledge out to all the people watching. I think fair to say one of the best high schools in New York City. Well, I'm glad you said it. I, I think mean. Every, one of the best. Everybody <laughs> yeah. wants to get in there. And we're hoping that by learning today, you're going to be able to, you're going to, we're going to gauge your interest. We're going to get you interested in computer science and hopefully give, get you interested in a career in computer science because, as you know, having made a career in it, it's a pretty good business to be in. It's, it's wonderful. I mean, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy teaching, but uh, if I wasn't teaching computer science, it would be uh, a lot, it would be a much uh, harder task for me. And of course, it's, there are so many things you can do with computer science. It's a tool uh, to take you many places. And so that's one of the things that I try to bring out in my classroom. So right now, watching this stream, we've got hundreds and hundreds of, of high school students watching us live. I want to thank you for joining us. Let me explain a little bit how the show is going to work today. Uh, first of all, John's going to give us a computer class, and we're going to learn a little bit about coding. Yep. That's going to be awesome. Uh, so you're going to see that live. Also, we're going to answer your questions. So if you've got questions about the class, about coding, about a career in computer science, you can ask those just by typing them into the comments section on Facebook right now. We will answer them uh, as we get them. And um, please, if I could just ask if, you could, if, you're, if you're watching this from a high school, if you could tell us what school you're watching from, that would really be useful to us. Uh, so we'd love to get that information. And then finally, at the end of the show, and you're going to want to stick around for this, our robot expert, PC Mag's robot expert, Will Greenwald, is going to be here to discuss the Lego Mindstorms robot that he built, which he says does some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Now, you don't need to learn how to code in order to use this, but it can be helpful. Certainly. So we're going to get to that, but without further ado, let's get to the actual coding session, which, you know, people think about coding, they think it's going to be really hard, they think about command line, they think about lots of text, but it's actually a lot easier than a lot of people realize. Yeah, it's really easy to get into coding. There are so many resources available uh, nowadays, and you can jump in at whatever level you feel comfortable. Uh, and so the tool that I'm going to show today and over the next couple sessions is called NetLogo. Uh, and one of the reasons why I love it is it's free, it's open source, uh, available on all major platforms, uh, and it runs on really great hardware. It runs on not so great hardware. Like if you've got a computer at home, you can run NetLogo mm -hmm. uh, or at school or wherever. Uh, so that's one of the things that I really like about it. It's accessible. So it's available for everyone, and we've got it up on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. and just Let's talk about a little bit about this basic interface. Mm -hmm. You've got a command center, and then you've got sort of a work area. Yeah, so this area here is the command center where you type in things, uh, and this uh, big black box right here is uh, what you call the NetLogo world, and that's where all the action is going to happen. Uh, basically, uh, some of you may be familiar with Logo, where you had a turtle, and the turtle could do stuff. NetLogo is like Logo on steroids. You can have as many turtles as you want, uh, and they interact with other environment, uh, other pieces of the environment, and that's all going to happen here. So it's very visual, and visual stuff is great. It's really great to start learning. So anybody can download this. Anybody can run it on any system. They install it. They get this interface. So where do you go from here? So exactly. So uh, we'll jump into it. So uh, the command center is where you might start uh, doing stuff, and you see down at the bottom it says observer and a little uh, little uh, thing there, cursor. That's what we call those things. Yeah, cursors. Uh, and so uh, right now there's nothing in the NetLogo world, and we want to make stuff, right? Logo is all about turtles. We can do that in NetLogo. So we can say, if we type, there we go, I can say create turtles one, All right? Pretty straightforward. I hit enter. And uh, you'll see this green thing in the middle of the screen. It doesn't look a lot like a turtle. Uh, I like to think it looks like the Star Trek logo, um, but it's just me. Uh, and there's our turtle. And now that we have a turtle, we can make it do stuff. Uh, and so straightforward, you go down to Observer, you click here, and you have options. And I can say Turtles, because now I'm talking to turtles. Uh, the Observer is kind of like the god of the NetLogo world. He can make stuff. He can remove stuff. But I just want turtles to do stuff. So now I have a turtle. And I can say, let's go forward. Uh, that's not how you spell forward. Spelling does matter when yeah. programming. Yeah, if I were in the classroom, my students would have jumped on that. Yeah. Uh, forward five, let's say. And what did I do? Oh, it's this trackpad. Uh -huh. Forward five. Nothing name. Oh, because I didn't spell forward right. You see? Forward five. Look at that. And there, it moved. 
Uh, if I want to make it turn right, I could say RT for right turn and give it some degrees. I could say right turn uh, 76 degrees. Seems like a good number of degrees. And it turns. Um, now, one of the things that is important, I tell my students this all the time, programmers are lazy. That's why we have programming, because we don't want to do this stuff. We want the computer to do it. So these, these commands like create turtles and forward, they're short. We have shortened versions. So if I wanted the turtle to move again, I could just say instead of forward, which is too long, FD 10. And it moves 10, it moves forward 10. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, and one other thing, right, this turtle, I don't know, he's a little small right now. So let's make it bigger. Nice thing about NetLogo, the commands are pretty straightforward. They sound like what you might say in English, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, Turtle, I want you to be bigger, so let's set your size to three. And now it's bigger. Uh, now, you might not like triangles. Uh, I don't know, maybe you got something Who about doesn't it. like triangles? I don't know, some people. <laughs> uh, I guess technically it has four sides. But anyway, uh, if you want this to look like a turtle, well, they have shapes. I can say, set shape. Turtle. So and I, now it looks like a turtle. I know we're going to get this question, right. why turtles? Because it uh, seems like that is the sort of lingua franca. Everybody refers to them <laughs> as turtles. So, uh, you know what? I don't have a really good answer to that. I know that Logo, which has been around for a long time and is a wonderful uh, educational programming tool, uh, you had a turtle. And uh, you know what? I don't have a good answer. Maybe yeah. they just really thought turtles It was were just cool. that's where it started and yeah. that's what we're using. Yeah, and that's what we got. Uh, you know, they, why, why do they call them apples? I mean, there's a good reason. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so now I've got a turtle. And one more thing about turtles before we get to do some cool stuff with them uh, is that when you have a turtle, you, uh, they all have pens. They, they carry around markers. You can't see it, but they're there. It's the two-dimensional thing. Uh, and so I can tell the turtle to put its pen down. It doesn't look like anything happened. But now, if I tell the turtle to go forward 10 again, he draws, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and you'll notice like, when the turtle went down at the bottom, he ended up back at the top. And by default, the NetLogo world sort of wraps around that way. So you're never going to run off the world or mm -hmm. like your turtle sort of disappears and gone and then you're sad, um, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, cool. I think we do have a question from oh, the audience. Let's, great. Let's find okay. out. Ralph Kaur from Kensington Kappa is asking, what are some uses for coding? I'm not familiar with uh, some of this application. Sure. So coding, uh, its uses are uh, as wild as you can imagine. I mean, sure, there's a lot of computer programming. You can make websites and you know try to make millions in Google or Facebook or whatever. Uh, but uh, there are plenty of uses for coding in other areas. You can use it to model uh, situations in the sciences or in the social sciences. Uh, what I think, when I think about coding and when I teach my classes, I'm thinking about giving them tools that can be used wherever they end up. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're going into the arts or uh, politics or math or physics or gaming. Right, coding can be used, uh, and you know you can use it to analyze things. You can use it to simulate things. You can use it to draw things and create art. There are languages designed around generating art. Mm. Right, you code and make art, and so coding is more about a tool that you can use wherever it is that you want it to take you. Yeah, and we're starting at the very, very basic level just to sort of show the initial interface between text and code and a graphical interface, and, and, and it's, it's very, very basic. But this is fundamentally the same type of interaction that you get when you're designing a video game yeah. or when you're designing a productivity tool or building a website. Like the, the, the code itself, the language itself, scales all the way up into these very complex situations. But the basic stuff is pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, one of the things that students ask, oh, do you teach game design? Do you teach, you know, at school, do you teach JavaScript? Do you teach that? Like, we teach you how to think like a programmer, how to, how to code, what the tools of computer science are, which are problem-solving tools at the end of the day, and you take that where you want, and we can help you get there. That's so you the said idea. there are some cool things you can do with this turtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the turtle, so first thought, well, one turtle is okay, uh, but I'm going to uh, make some more turtles. Now, uh, shortcut, because we're lazy programmers, if I hit tab, I can change this thing down here from other uh, agent sets, go to the observer. I want to start with a flesh, fresh slate. So uh, if I do CA, it clears everything. Clear all, right, lazy shorthand. 
Now, uh, also... Which is basically what everyone uses in text messaging anyway. It's yeah, short yeah, abbreviations yeah, well, yeah, exactly. to prevent typing it all out. So that's also a form of code. Sure. It's just a form of code that nobody under 40 gets. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get what my students say. It's fine. Uh, so CRO, create ordered turtles. I'm just going to make, uh, let's say, 50 turtles, right? Now I've got a whole bunch of turtles, and they're all piled on top of each other in the middle. Uh, and... Why did I do this? Because now I can go into the turtle context. I can say, put your pens down, everybody, nothing happens. Uh, but let's make them go forward. Let's go forward five. And now I've got this pretty pinwheel effect. See, it's a crowd pleaser. Everybody, yeah, you know, I do this one. in class and I'm like, woo. The create ordered turtles, one of the things it does is it regularly uh, separates their angles and does the color in a pattern, this rainbow pattern. Mm -hmm. right? And so now we've got a bunch of turtles, and this is where in that logo I say, all right, go forward five again. Just keep going, guys. All right? And if I do it, Again, they'll start to sort of bounce around in the world and, and uh, move around. So this is where we're start, starting to see some differences, the complexity that NetLogo can bring. Uh, now, I've got turtles. Maybe I want to draw some shapes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so I could, write a, I could write a bunch of things. Like if I wanted to do a square, I'd be like, go forward, turn 90 degrees, go forward, turn 90 degrees. Uh, but I have here square. And let's say four. And all these turtles, they each drew a square. Mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's one of the things. Every time you give a command to the turtles, they all do it. The four was the length of the sides of the squares. That's where it came from. And now it's getting a little busy. And so uh, we're going to clear things out again. Clear all. Great. And I'm going to make, let's make three turtles. Three turtles in the middle, and go back. And before I tell them to put their pens down, let's separate them a little bit so they have their own space. And I want to show that square thing again. Square, four. Uh, let's make it bigger. Five. So they each drew a square. Now, like I said, we could have typed in the individual commands to do it, uh, but there's this procedure here. Here's the thing. There's no built-in net logo square thing. Mm -hmm. I wrote that. And anybody can write that. And that's sort of the next thing that you can start doing is once, you've get, once you get comfortable with the built-in commands in that logo, you start writing your own. And that's, you write functions, and these are things you're going to be writing no matter what language you're dealing with. So uh, in that logo, at the very top here, uh, there's this code tab. Right? We were in the interface tab. Now I'm going to the code tab. And here is a procedure that I wrote in that logo. Uh, and every procedure in that logo starts with a name. I named it Square. Uh, I could have named it anything. I could have named it Bob. And just to see that, if I uh, check it out, nothing named Square. Oh, Bob, ignore all of that. That's an interesting thing. <laughs> People think about a computer language. You think about learning a language. You need to learn what all the words are, learn how the verbs work, learn the right. grammar. When it comes to computer programming, you can create your own words sure. and your own grammar and your own rules. Yeah, exactly. So I call this thing Bob. I'm going to make turtles. I'm going to make them go forward three. And uh, let's go Bob three. There we go. Bob's a square. Uh, something like that. Uh, so anyway, you give it a name. Uh, in these square brackets here, you give it what, what we call a parameter, some input. Really, mm -hmm. that's, that's just what it is. How big do we want the square to be? Uh, I named it Len. I couldn't name it length because it existed in that logo. Okay. That's an important thing in coding. If you ever try to write in a language, there are some built-in words that you can't use because uh, you don't want to confuse the computer. So you can make up your own words, but you right. can't use their. You can't rename their words. Yeah. The words yeah. are already there. Because it needs to know certain things. So you see this command PD. We saw that already. Put their pens down, so I know it'll draw a square. The first time I wrote this, by the way, last night, I didn't put PD, and I was typing square, and it didn't work. And I was like, oh, oh, right. The answer almost always when you have a problem coding is you're an idiot. Yeah. Right? It's like, probably you did user error. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, right. PD. But that's not a bad thing. Like, <laughs> no. the fact that you get lost and you make mistakes and you obviously know what you're doing, you use this program for a long time, yeah. that doesn't bother you. You're like, oh, no, I just, you self correct, you learn yeah. from it, and you move faster next time. That's a great point. It's really, mistakes are wonderful in coding. Because did anything major happen when I left out PD? No. It just didn't draw the square, it just moved around. So mistakes, you can always go back, fix it, see what's going on. You learn from mistakes so often in coding. Let's get another question in from the audience. Yeah. Yamari from Kensington, 
uh, also uh, wanted to know what made you want to pursue a career in coding? Great question. Uh, I had the uh, lucky privilege of going to Stuyvesant High School myself. Uh, and I say lucky because in 1998 or so, there weren't many high schools that were doing computer science. Uh, I, from my sophomore year through, well, now, I've been coding. And it just, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed computers beforehand, but having the ability to write programs and get them to do things, and it's this, this back and forth, this like, oh, can I get it to do this? Yes, or no, it didn't work, but I can easily move, and it's, it's really fulfilling, right? You're building things, uh, and I mean, I like building things in all sorts of ways, but you know, I live in Manhattan. I can't you know, have a wood shop or anything, mm -hmm. but I've got a computer. I can build stuff, and it's really fulfilling to make things that, you know, and nowadays it's so easy to move programs around, be like, hey, this is a cool thing I wrote, and other people might be interested, maybe not, but uh, it's being, being able to build something and solve problems is... Uh, some of the most rewarding things that I get, and yeah. so that's why I'm here. You hear that a lot from from software engineers. It's a, there's the the drive to create something new mm -hmm. and actually make something, and then the ability to pro the the desire to problem solve and just yeah. work the problem. And it's not really it's not like a math problem. It's more like a problem that requires being able to make something work, and that seems much more satisfying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you think about programming, you're really teaching, right? You're teaching the computer how to do the thing so that you don't have to do it anymore, mm -hmm. uh, right? Uh, you know, in math class, if you're learning the quadratic equation or something, you might uh, solve a lot of problems to figure out the roots of a, a parabola or something. In computer science, you figure out how to solve the quadratic equation, write a program, teach the computer to do it, and then it's going to do it all the time. Um, so the motivating factors are desire to create, desire to problem solve, and laziness. Yes, that, that is the perfect combination yeah. for a future coder. Yeah, but we're smart lazy. Smart lazy. Yeah. Smart lazy is waiting. We have another yeah. question from the audience. Sure. We have Lily from uh, Memorial Junior High wants to know, are all coding languages the same? And if not, where is a good place to start learning the different terminology? Wonderful question. Uh, no, languages are... So the answer is yes and no, like it is with a lot of things. <laughs> Not all languages are the same, but many languages have similar aspects. Uh, so what we're looking at right now, NetLogo, uh, everything happens inside NetLogo. Uh, and it's, well, we might call it a procedural language as we write these procedures, like, well, Bob now. Uh, and, and there are other languages which are, uh, you build objects and you make them do stuff. And uh, there's all sorts of terminology, but there are certain things that you're always going to see in uh, programming languages and so things like control statements you might hear people say conditional statements mm. making decisions do I when do I do this when don't I uh, looping writing procedures uh, you're gonna be doing all these things and so there's a lot of similarities uh, I, I believe that the question also included where to start right mm -hmm. uh, sorry I go on tangent sometimes uh, so Lots of good places to start and almost too many resources, right? You sit down and like learn to code and it's, you know, Google blows up and you don't know where to start. You're sure. sort of paralyzed with options. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I chose NetLogo. I think it's a great place to start. Um, you can learn a lot from it. You can use it in later sessions. We're going to see how to use it in other areas, how, do we be, how it can be applied to doing things like writing games, because we like games, uh, and other things like that. Uh, if you're looking to do other stuff, uh, so my like top three learning to do uh, programming tools, NetLogo processing, uh, which is based off Java, but does certain things a little bit easier and allows you to do natively graphical stuff, which is really good. Um, and then uh, Python is a great language. There are lots of places to learn Python. Uh, and but you really can't go wrong if you find a sort of starting off point in Python because uh, Python is a language used all over the industry. Uh, like in certain ways, like NetLogo, commands are straightforward, so you can know what you're doing, uh, and you can do a lot. So those are like my top three. Python level is is really that's a real programming language. Like that's. That's a pro level. You, you can actually build real stuff and actually get a job. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Python powers uh, applications in the tech industry and other places. Uh, and now, but I don't want anybody to think that that's not accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, there are great 
resources in Python. And you know, like my students, after taking one semester of computer science, they're sophomores, uh, they then could take a Python course, right? And they jump into it and they build stuff. You know, you're not going to build Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, uh, you could build a little web blog. Mm -hmm. Web blog. Uh, I'm That's an old a, guy. They just, call, they just call them blogs now. Yeah, I know. I, I think know. they just call them the web now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so those are all great resources to get going. So this, so this is a great initial resource, mm -hmm. um, starter, starter language, starter tool. Are mm -hmm. there other cool things we can do with it? Sure, great. So I've got this procedure. I just want to, in case anybody's confused about what's going on here. Uh, so when you draw a square, what do you do? You go forward and you turn right and you do it four times. So there's this thing called a loop. How many times do I need to do it? Four times. So I repeat four, forward and right 90. Uh, P-U, of course, you're telling the turtle it smells. No. I, you're saying pen up so it doesn't draw anymore. So that is how to write a procedure. And every time you finish it, uh, just like the end of a good book, you just say end, and it's done. Uh, so one other, uh, another cool part of NetLogo is uh, let's, uh, let's clear things out again. Observer, clear all. I'm just going to make a single turtle now. And I've been hiding things from you all. There's all this white space on the screen. You're like, what's oh, great it for? Great reveal. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, there's all this white space on the screen. You're like, what is it for? Uh, NetLogo allows you to make these interface elements. Uh, I've got some sliders here uh, and a couple buttons. And these are, they're used in procedures. And I'll go back to the code and show you. Uh, but this is a thing, right? So I have side length and angle. And I have this button called pattern. And if I click it, it happens real fast. Mm -hmm. Turtles move fast. But... What's happening is we're, we're calling my, my Bob procedure now, uh, and every time after it draws a square, it rotates. So they're actually moving right now. I don't know if you can see that yeah, on the screen. Yeah. It's real fast. You can actually slow it down. There's a little slider up top, and there he goes. There goes the turtle racing around, and back to normal speed. Super fast because it's not very hard. It's not an intensive thing. Also, uh, this Lenovo laptop is very, very... Yeah, this Very is nice. this is big and beefy. It's not like uh, what I run at home or at school, but uh, you know it's nice. Uh, and so I can change things while it's running. This is one of the nice things about NetLogo is I can say no, those are too big, so let me shrink them. And then we patterns, right? It's pretty. Uh, and I can change the angle. And if I do that, it's now uh, now they're ninety degrees between uh, each square. And if I make the side length bigger. Now, if you do 90 degrees between each square, you just get this diamond. All right, that's too much. Let's stop. Now, how did all this happen? I was hiding more stuff from you because that's what I do. Showmanship. Uh, so I wrote another procedure called pattern. Uh, now, right, this thing called Bob, that was our square. And I say Bob side length. And where'd side length come from? The slider. Mm -hmm. right, so it's just going to pick up that uh, procedure. And then I say turn right by whatever that angle from the slider. And so that's the pattern function. Uh, setup just makes a turtle, and I decided to make it pink. It'll make my wife happy. Uh, she likes pink. So I go back to the interface, and if I do setup, it clears everything, makes one turtle. So now the nice thing is once you start building procedures, you don't even need the command center. Mm -hmm. right? You can start building procedures, attaching them to buttons, and uh, you know doing stuff. So I can say, oh, let's do 180 degrees. That's not that interesting because, you know, we're regular intervals. Now I can move and up. I think that's a real interesting point, too, is that we hid it from you to start off with just to save time. But we, this was really a blank sheet when you started. Oh. There was nothing there. You built all these tools. You built these sliders. You built the buttons. Yeah. And now you don't have to rebuild them every time because yeah. now you can just turn it into a button. And that sort of gets to the, the whole function of coding. Yeah. You build it once, and then you reuse it an infinite number of times, and it saves you work. Yeah, exactly. And... Interface design is important. NetLogo gives you a chance. These might not be the uh, sexiest looking buttons and sliders in the world, but uh, it gives you a chance to do all sorts of things and get used to that. And one thing, in case anybody's wondering uh, like why the turtle keeps doing the pattern program, if you can see in the corner of the pattern button, there's this little like recycling arrows. Mm -hmm. That is a forever button. And if we just, we can edit it just so you see what this looks like. Uh, it's forever, which means it's just going to keep calling that function mm -hmm. over and over and over and over again. And it's a turtle thing, and I call it pattern, and that's how you do a button. And really, that's uh, what I wanted to show in my initial here's NetLogo. 
Uh, there's a lot to parse out of this, and there's a lot of places you can go. So we're gonna do we're gonna do this every week for the next three weeks, yeah. uh, same time, same channel. Uh, if you want to replay this, you'll be able to replay it. So we're gonna get a little bit more complex next week. Yeah, yeah. A little bit more sophistication. Yeah, and we're gonna look at the patches, which I didn't talk about, and we're gonna do some image manipulation with patches. Uh, once again, I'm just trying to show various things you can do in the NetLogo world. Let's get another question from the audience. Okay, we have Donovan Bell asking, any specific applications you can use NetLogo for? Like, why would you learn this as opposed to just diving into, say, C? Uh, well, uh, first off, I, I love C. You might not want to dive into C. Uh, to do C well, you really need to understand what's going on in the memory of the computer. Um, but besides that, applications for NetLogo, if you want to build something and you want to build it fast, NetLogo is a great way to prototype things. And this is, like in regular industries, it happens too, right? You your prototype might not look like the finished product, but if it does the things uh, that you want it to do, then you can get there. NetLogo, between writing the code very easily and generating these, uh, these interface widgets quickly and on the fly, you can prototype things real fast. So NetLogo gets you the ability to build stuff and understand how it all works really quickly, and that's a, a key point. What are, what are some of the things your students have built with NetLogo, some of the cool things? Uh, so uh, my students love writing games, uh, and every year I see clones of whatever game uh, du jour is. You know, I've got Angry Birds, uh, I've had a number of tower defenses, Tetris, uh, but sometimes my students do other really great things in NetLogo. I've seen uh, people do kind of Photoshop-y things, where you apply filters to images. Uh, I've seen... Uh, last year, a couple students wrote an iPhone simulator, uh, and complete with some apps, the iPhone simulator had a Flappy Bird clone in it, uh, and so that was kind of fun. Uh, and so I, I'm excited. On the last session, I'm going to show some of these uh, things that my students have done, because I, I really like uh, what they do. Very cool. Another question from the audience? Yeah. Uh, Anthony Davis uh, from Kensington asked, where did the idea for uh, programmable programmable robots come from, like the Lego robot. Oh, should we transition to the robots? Yeah, I think, uh, I we, think should we should talk should to Will about I that. I think we should talk to Will about that and transition yeah. to robots. So here to talk to us about robots is going to be Will Greenwald, but, PC well, Mag's but. robot expert. And we are showing off, I'll hold it up and then we'll probably put it back down on the table, the Lego Mindstorms. This which, is the EV3 sets, their most recent one. Basically, Lego Mindstorms is a Lego set with a brain and sensors and motors you can attach to it and you can program them to do stuff, or directly control them, which I'm going to show as soon as this boots up. Uh, you know, technology is the physical application of science, making it useful as like something that is out there, that you can touch, that you can feel. Robotics is sort of the physical application of coding. Yeah. Obviously, coding is still super useful because it's what we use, <laughs> but robotics... Pure software, and this is a mix of hardware and software. Yeah, okay. engineering and programming gets you robotics. And I believe we can sync this right now. Is the, those aren't going to start spinning. Do I have to put this down? You should probably put it down. <laughs> okay, see? Uh, this is technically not a robot. This is a Waldo because I'm controlling it directly as soon as it connects. Uh, a robot is something you can program to respond to information, to basically make decisions and work. This one, I have a joystick, and so this is a this is a kit. There we go. This is a kit that's available. How much how much would this these components cost? Uh, yeah, Mindstorms is a little bit expensive. Uh, I believe retail, this is 350 If you look on eBay, you can find it cheaper. If you find the previous version of Mindstorms, NXT 2.0, you can get it for a lot cheaper. Uh, it doesn't allow direct control with a tablet or smartphone, but you can still program it, and that's what makes this really interesting. Right now, I can just directly control this. There's a fan. But if I wanted to, I could plug this into or create a code on an SD card and load it onto here a uh, script for it to run. And I could teach it to say, uh, this thing is an object sensor. You can see right here it pops up. I could program it to keep moving until it runs into a wall, then back up and go again. Uh, using the same concept that you use with turtles. It's yeah. the exact same. It's but the with, same pr procedures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, and in terms of programming languages, Mindstorms uses a very simple, like, completely tile-based. You're basically picking out tools and putting them in a line. So it's not really... Uh, on its own, it's not quite as useful to learn as NetLogo or C, but it's, again, it gives you the idea of how to structure code, how to, how to envision what you want to build, what input it takes in, what output it takes. We have a question? Yeah, it was just a NetLogo question. Can you use that programming language to make apps? Uh, so, great question. Uh, I think when we say apps, we are now talking about things that go on your phones uh, mm -hmm. and that. So, no, uh, I mean, and to write apps, you're 
looking, if you're running an Android app, you want to write in Android, which is basically in Java. Uh, and iPhone, you want to write in, well, Swift is a good language now, and Objective-C. Uh, now, there are some really cool tools to get started in apps. For uh, the Android world, uh, there's this thing called App Inventor, which uses some of the block-based programming concepts that uh, Will was mentioning with the Lego Mindstorms uh, that you can use to make apps. Um, and so, yeah, NetLogo won't make apps, but they will make programs that you can run on whatever computer has NetLogo. So in, if you learn NetLogo, let's say you spend a year, you take mm -hmm. it in class, you study it for a year, how far along does that get you the next year when you're going to pick up Java or you're going to move on to another language? It gets you very far. I mean, we, we only do NetLogo actually for a couple months, and then we go to a different language. One of the things, if you're starting to learn, it's cool to learn a few different languages so you get to see what are the similarities, what are the differences, and... Uh, oh, I can do this in this language, I bet I can do it in this one, and then you just sort of, you know what to search for, right? Your Google Foo is much better, mm -hmm. uh, and you can go, yeah. And then we, we talk about Mindstorms, this is not really programming, because you, you've really already got the interface built, you've already got your tools built, and well, you actually, can recombine some of those tools? You can, uh, actually, interesting thing about the interface, again, like you can put buttons there that do things. Uh, this is a custom show to control camera. panel, and if I wanted to, I could make a new robot, and this box, there are four inputs and four outputs. You can plug four sensors in and four motors in. And there are, uh, you can daisy chain them. There are a bunch of different things you can do with Mindstorms. And with really any Legos, if you want to get into engineering, it's a great place to start because you can get super creative. But you can start off with just this basic canvas and say, I want a, uh, a button that triggers the motor. All I need to do is find uh, something that, <laughs> find the button I icon. Have it activate, let's say, this one goes to uh, C. So just have it activate C. It goes in. It's a big red button. Yep. Yeah, big red button. So it's the same concept as making an interface with NetLogo. And, uh, you know, Lego, Mindstorms, is sort of just a starting place. It, you know, gives you a lot of things to work with. But if you want to move on to more complex, to more complicated devices, uh, higher end concepts, like you would move on from NetLogo to say C, you could move on from this to something like, have it in my pocket. Uh -oh. oh, here, I thought you were saving that for next week. Uh, well, I still want to give you a preview. Do, do you need this one? A little bit, oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> this could be a good next step. It lets you give a better idea of, kind of, is not necessarily building electronics, it's more like programming with electronics. But we'll be showing this next week, along with some of the higher end coding you can get, thanks to the more advanced things you can do with more granular devices. So that's the 101 portion of our, of our Hack to School program brought to you by Lenovo. Uh, we talked a little bit about the introductory tools, some basic programming, some of the thoughts behind coding. We showed a little bit about what could be done with, with programming, with code, once you have these tool, toolkits built. And then next week we're going to talk about little bits and actually programming with electronics. Uh, possibly, possibly the week after that. Broadly defined. <laughs> But uh, you can replay this episode at any time. We're going to have it up on YouTube very shortly. I want to thank you all for joining us. This has been Hack to School, brought to you by Lenovo with PC Mag. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be back next week with a brand new show.